Hey guys, Britt here from Full Dad Mode. Say, if you're like me, you don't always keep up on your grill maintenance. Today I'm going to show you how to refurbish this old grill and keep it looking like new. I'm going to show you how to replace some old parts while giving it a deep clean. Now let's get after it. Here's the list of materials you need to complete this project. For cleaning supplies, you need dish soap and vinegar to cut through the grease stains. Cleaning vinegar works nicely because it's more acidic, but regular vinegar works too. You also need cleaning brushes and sponges for scrubbing the grill inside and out. A grill brush for grates, storage bins to soak and clean grill parts, and latex or nitro gloves are optional, but they help keep grease off your hands. The new parts are dependent on your need. You might need new grill grates, flavorizer bars, burner tubes, igniter, and drip pans if you're doing a full overhaul. I didn't need grill grates because mine were relatively new, but the rest I did need. The tools for this job are pretty basic. A putty knife and steel brush to clean out the interior of the grill, a screwdriver and wrench to take the grill apart, shop vacuum to vacuum up the pieces, and then a tarp helps prevent grease stains from the pieces that fall on the ground. A five gallon bucket to clean up the mess, and then a hose and spray nozzle to spray everything off. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is mix dish soap with warm water in your storage bin for soaking your parts. Next, remove your grill grates and soak them in the soap bath while cleaning the rest of the grill. Remove the flavorizer bars. I'm throwing mine away because they're rusted through. If yours are in good condition, go ahead and soak them in the soap bath. This is where the job really starts to get messy. Nitro gloves help keep the grease off your hands. They're optional, but if you have them, use them. Check to see what kind of flame output the burner tubes provide. For mine, you can see large, inconsistent yellow flames. These should burn a consistent size blue flame, so I'm going to replace these. The first step in taking apart your grill is to remove the igniter box. Do this by removing the two screws that attach it to the grill. Remove the wires that attach to the box by pulling them out. This will allow you to easily take off the control panel. Now you're ready to remove the control panel. Do so by removing the knobs and soaking them in the soap bath. Remove the control panel by unscrewing the mounting screws and lifting it up from its mounting bracket behind the panel. Remove the igniter switch from the panel and soak the panel in the soap bath. Now you're ready to remove the burner tubes. The burner tubes are connected to the back of the grill with bolts. Mine are rusted on and can't be removed, so I'm going to show you how to remove the burner tubes a different way by removing the gas exchange bracket. If your tubes and mounting bolts are in good shape, you can skip this step and move on to the next. Remove the gas exchange bracket by removing two screws and two bolts connecting it to the grill. Pull it off and leave aside. It will hang from the gas hose that you can leave connected. Remove the igniter cable from the burner tube by pulling the cable out from the bracket holder connected to the burner. It should easily unlock and slide out. Now you can pull the burner tubes out from the grill. Since I'm going to replace these burner tubes, I'm just going to set aside and discard. As you can see, my grill is a mess, and the drip pan hole is completely filled with grease and metal debris, so I'm using a shop vac to clean this out. If you've been keeping up with your grill cleaning, you may be able to skip this step, or just push the debris through the drop pan hole. Remove the drip tray and toss the debris in a five gallon bucket. Next, remove the metal drip pan. Use a putty knife to scrape out the metal drip pan holder and place the metal drip pan holder in the soap bath. Replace the drip tray to catch any grease and debris from the next step as you scrape out the grill. Next, you'll use a putty knife, steel brush, and cleaning brush to clean out the inside of the grill. Scrape the flat surfaces with the putty knife. For corners and tight spaces, a small steel brush works well. Then, use the scrub brush to sweep debris down to the drip pan. Repeat the process with the lid to scrape it clean. It's common to see flaking like this on the lid of your grill. It's caused by grease that accumulates and carbonizes, eventually to the point where it bubbles up and flakes off. It's non-toxic, but doesn't really taste good, so you want to clean it so it doesn't flake onto your food. Remove the drip tray again and toss the debris in a five gallon bucket. Tip. The blue tarp helps catch grease that falls to the ground and prevents staining on your patio or driveway. Vacuum the grease and debris from the inside base of the grill. So there's the finished product, ready to do the deep clean. 
Mix equal parts vinegar and dish soap in a bucket of warm water. The vinegar is acidic and helps cut through the grease on the grill. I'm using cleaning vinegar, but regular white vinegar works as well. The main difference is cleaning is more acidic. To wash the grill, start with the inside out. You'll use a scrub brush and scouring sponge to wash the inside of the grill as well as the outside. When washing the grill, rinse and repeat as needed. Use a hose to spray the suds off the grill and repeat brushing as needed until the grease is gone. For stubborn grease stains, use your metal brush or steel wool. Wash off the lid and exterior of the grill and before you know it, it'll be looking like new. Now you're ready to scrub the parts that were in the soap bath. Use a scrub brush and sponge to scrub the grill grates, control panel and knobs, and drip pan that have been soaking in the soap bath. Rinse them clean in the clean water storage bin after scrubbing each part. Now you're ready to rebuild your grill. If you're replacing your burner tubes, here's how they fit together. The burner holes should face up and the horizontal connector tube has a notch in the middle that connects it to the bracket to align it to the appropriate position. Align the hole on the first tube with the horizontal connector tube and put the pieces together like this. Now you know how these fit together and it will be easier to install correctly on your grill outside. When fastening the tubes to the grill, these tubes bolt onto the back inside of the grill. Remember, my bolts are rusted on, so I'm sliding them under the existing bolts rather than taking off the bolts and retightening. Put the tubes together like this. Slide the gas exchange bracket back into place and connect it to the burner tubes. Reconnect the gas exchange bracket with the screws and bolts. Next, you'll connect the igniter to the control panel. Install the igniter on the control panel by clicking the igniter switch into the control panel. Next, you'll connect the igniter cable onto the burner tube. The cable should easily click onto the tube, like so. Now you're ready to install the control panel. Make sure to thread the igniter cables through the inside base of the grill. Slide the control panel onto its holding brackets and fasten the control panel with screws to secure it to the grill. Pop the control knobs back onto their holding brackets. Now you're ready to install the igniter. If you're installing a new igniter, first put in a new battery into the igniter unit. Connect igniter cables to the igniter unit. Follow cable color coding to connect the cables to the correct location. Fasten the igniter unit to the grill using the provided screws. Reconnect your propane tank and test the igniter. The flame should ignite after a few clicks and be a cool, even blue throughout. Replace the metal drip pan holder by putting it back into its holding place. Insert a new aluminum drip pan tray. Next, slide the drip tray back into place. And now you're ready to replace the flavorizer bars. Simply put them back into place above the burners. Finally, put the grill grates back on the grill and your grill is looking like new. So there you have it, a totally refurbished Weber Spirit E310 grill cleaned for a fraction of the price of buying a new grill. 
you can see it came a long way and has many grilling years ahead. I would definitely recommend staying up on the cleaning each year and not letting it get as bad as mine did. If you clean out the inside base, the drip tray, and grates each year, you'll keep it looking good and minimize the need for a deep clean like this. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe for more great how-to videos to make the most of life and go full dad mode. All right guys, there it is, final product. Wow, that was a lot of work, but that's how you go full dad mode. Now let's grab a cold one.